man, I am thankful for Chris Tower. What a man of God he is, amen? Yes. What an awesome man of God. Someone that can come and challenge us, give us a great word this morning. So Chris, it's humble hearts. We say thank you for coming and being willing to minister to me today. Such a great God, man of God you are, amen? amen. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Amen. Amen. It would have been cool to just stay there in that moment, like, let's just bask. <laughs> let's soak. Good morning. And my name is Chris Tower, one of the leaders here at CLC. It is my privilege to minister the word. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. So good. I had a wonderful Thanksgiving, um, lots of good food. And uh, I hope that you had a very enriching time with your family and uh, had some good food around the table as well. Today, right on the heels of Thanksgiving, I wanted to take an opportunity to set a different kind of table that you can feast at, which is amazing because I wrote that and somebody said that before. That's when you know you're like, God, okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> so imagine with me Thanksgiving banquet set before you, probably not very difficult to imagine because we just came right off the heels of it, right? Now, I could sit here and describe how moist that beautiful turkey was, which by the way, I cooked my own turkey this year. Props to anybody who did that is some work, I gotta tell you. Came out good though, hallelujah. Imagine me describing the rich, creamy mashed potatoes that are just right. I could go on about the incredible apple crumble pie, which by the way, I had melt in your mouth, absolutely amazing. I could describe any number of these dishes or you could just taste it and experience it for yourself. Now, which would you rather have? This would be the perfect opportunity, by the way, for like that Oprah thing where like, Thanksgiving for you, and they come in with all these platters. Like, sorry, I hate to disappoint. We're not doing that today. But a description of a delicious meal versus the experience of actually eating that meal, of course, we would want to go for the food. We want the experience. And yet in our walk with God, uh-oh, have you ever just settled for having someone merely describe the promises, the goodness of God, but yet never taking the steps to experience it for yourself. Now, I don't know if you've ever been there. I know I sure have. There are times in life where it seems like you just hit a wall, like some invisible force even is pinning you down, keeping you back from experiencing his goodness. Have you ever been frustrated like that in your walk with God feeling stuck? Pretty normal, so don't worry. If you feel stuck, it's normal to get stuck, not normal to stay stuck though. Amen? Amen? Today I want to teach you some of the things God's been teaching me so that you can, as Psalm 34, 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Can we say that together? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are not a dead God. We thank you, Father, that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead and not him alone, but your word says you raised us up with him. And Lord, we thank you that we can be those who don't just intellectualize our faith, but those who step into it for real, that it becomes an experience, something we enjoy, that we will be those who taste and see that you are good. God, we thank you for your breakthrough anointing today. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. So the most powerful thing that you can do to experience God, to taste and see that he is good, is to continually renew your mind. Romans 12, 2 puts it this way. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation is the experience that comes from the mind being renewed, and transformation is us tasting and seeing that he is good. Amen? So today I want to share with you some of the principles I've been learning about this very topic of renewing your mind. And this is by no means some exhaustive list that you can like, <laughs> Chris said, you know, no, like anything in the Bible, everything is so interconnected. There are a number of things that you can do that will renew your mind. But today I want to encourage you, if you engage your hearts with uh, the principles that I'm going to be sharing today, you will go on that journey of transformation God has planned for you. So the, my first point this morning is renewing your mind requires that you recognize the complete work of Jesus already inside you. 
Renewing your mind is a process. It is a salvation process. You are saved and you are being saved. You have become like Jesus and you are becoming like Jesus. You have been justified and yet you are in the process of being sanctified. So how can it be both? I'm gonna quickly illustrate this through the metaphor of a garden, which I'm very excited about. So please turn your attention to the screen for this wonderful, it's not a drawing, but this wonderful illustration here. Your life in many ways can be likened to a garden. Your physical experience is like the plants that you see on the screen. That they're above the ground and these represent your actions, your behaviors, and your words. Now, each of these actions and words have a root system. Next slide, please. That's below the surface of the soil. And we'll call the level of this soil your soul. Today, when I talk about the soul, I'm going to be defining it as thinking, feeling, and choosing. And yet, deeper still is the realm of our spirit. When we receive Christ into our life, we're born again, born of the spirit. Jesus uses this language in John 3, which you can go and read on your own, but check out the verbiage that the apostle Peter uses in 1 Peter, catch this, the verse, chapter one, verse 23, one, two, three. Anybody knows me? God has been like, one, two, three for the past like six months. I went and found the scripture. I'm like, no, (laughs) say it ain't so. All right, 1 Peter 1, 23, this is what he says. You have been born again, not of perishable seed or corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the living and abiding word of God. You have been born of incorruptible seed of the word. When you believe God planted that seed into your spirit and he made you alive again to God. So back to our illustration. If we go back to slide three, please. That seed is planted in your spirit. The seed is the finished work of the cross and resurrection. So this is very powerful. So come with me on this journey. In your spirit, you are completely made like Jesus. So that now when the Father sees you, he sees Jesus's perfect record. When you receive Christ, you did not just get a clean slate. Yay, I am so thankful for the forgiveness of my sin. Hallelujah. But God gave us a much better deal than that. You got Jesus's record. What does Jesus's perfect record qualify you for? Oh boy. Let's look at Romans 5. Verses one through two, it says this. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, that's the, I got Jesus's perfect record thing. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also, everybody say also. Also. We have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. The hope of the glory of God, that yet future thing, that's a sermon for another time, but this grace in which we stand, Jesus' record that you now have qualifies you to receive that grace. What is God's grace? Very simply, the Greek word is charis, which just means gift. It's his gift. God's grace describes the multifaceted resources of heaven for every circumstance that you face in life. There are vaults in heaven right now that have your name on it. And the Father is delighted to pour those things out into your life because we have been given access through the righteousness of Christ. Amen? Oh, that's good news. Jesus' finished work, because of Jesus' finished work, you and I now have access to these resources of heaven for every situation we face. And it's not just that. That finished work of Christ, the Father's actually prepared those hidden gems of grace for every situation. It's the spirit of God that reveals them to us, helps us discern the truth. Every circumstance you face in life, the father has prepared a gift of provision, which is his grace waiting for you. So what does this have to do with tasting and seeing that God is good and renewing your mind? You can try to approach renewing your mind by like achieving. I'm going to achieve. I'm just going to white knuckle it and sweat a little bit. And, ah. Or instead of achieving, you can receive it by faith. Transformation that comes through a renewed mind is God's grace. And it's your father's delight to give it to you. It is his delight from before you could ever do a thing to put you in Christ and put Christ in you so that you could be qualified so that you could be the light of the world, amen? 
the thing you and I are tasting and seeing that he's good, it's his manifest grace in our life. So if you're striving to get that gift, better start over. Different, get off on the right foot instead. If you're in Christ, that grace is already flowing out of your heart. In fact, John 7, 38, Jesus says this, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And this he was speaking about the spirit of God. The spirit of grace is, everybody say, is flowing. He is flowing in your life and the spirit of grace is giving you eyes to see it today. Amen. I'm gonna say it again. That river of his goodness, of his grace is already flowing in your life if you are in Christ. So let's get back to our drawing. At the deepest level of who you are, slide four, the finished work of Christ is planted like a seed. Actually, that's the perfect one. Thank you. And it begins to flow and grow upward by the working of the Holy Spirit. And it's flowing and growing up into the realm of your soul. And now that seed of God's word is affecting how you're thinking, you're feeling, you're choosing. It's affecting your conscious mind. And here's where we meet the resistance. Uh Uh-oh. This is actually where renewing your mind comes into play. This is where the seed meets resistance. In fact, a lot of, in fact, I just read today, John chapter 13, in the gospel of John, Jesus said, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it can by no means bear fruit. He's talking about enduring suffering, laying your life down for those, you see, speaking of himself. It's amazing how seed represents so much in the scripture, but within one seed is a billion other seeds, right? So the seed of God's word, it's a very powerful metaphor, but that is by the working of the spirit, growing up and coming into the realm of your soul. But like any garden, you'll quickly discover that there are invasive species of roots. If we could have that slide number five up. Invasive species of roots, some big ugly rocks that are preventing that healthy seed of God's word from growing in your garden. But the big difference with biblically renewing your mind is that as you clean up the nasty bits, clean up the nasty bits of the soil in your garden, you aren't striving to become like Jesus. You're discovering the true you that's been born again in the spirit. Amen? Renewing your mind begins with the understanding that you are a new creature in Christ. You have everything you need already. 2 Peter 1.3 says this, his divine power has granted to us all things. Everybody say, all things. Amen. That pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who calls us to his own glory and excellence. Renewing your mind is a process of discovery with the Holy Spirit. We discover the person that has been reborn in the spirit already. Okay, back to our drawing. Slide six, the garden of our life. So if this beautiful, healthy word is growing upwards, What's stopping us from experiencing that grace? What's stopping us from tasting and seeing that he is good? It's the nasty bits. These invasive roots and plants, big, ugly rocks, these represent traumas, represent misconceptions. They represent ungodly beliefs that we have in the soil of our soul. This is where the real work of renewing your mind really gets going in our lives. And that leads me to number two. Renewing your mind requires that you face down toxic thoughts. All right, so here's a picture of what your brain is filled with. Yep, that one. You can keep it up if you don't mind. The tree on the left represents a healthy thought tree, and the tree on the right represents a toxic thought tree. Your brain is filled with multitudes of both of these. In fact, Every neural pathway that is in your brain looks like a tree, believe it or not. Thoughts in the brain do look like this, and every healthy as well as toxic thought tree has branches. And today we're going to use this again as a metaphor. Those branches represent triggers, things, reactions that you have, emotional reactions or responses that you find yourself um, having in the middle of a situation. Then you have the trunk. All those branches are connected to a center place. We'll talk about what that means, but it represents our perspective. And then all of that is then connected to a root system, which is representative of 
the origin of where that toxic or healthy thought came to be in your life. Now, <laughs> I'll just put this in real quick. These are not, like that toxic tree that's on your right, that's not your destiny, okay? Here's the thing about your brain, I'm sure you've heard it before, is neuroplastic. Your brain is constantly changing, constantly changing. And today, neurogenesis, you had like hundreds of millions of cells ready to be like, whatever you want me to do, I will do. And it's our mind that actually directs that process of the formation of our brain. Your brain and your mind are not the same thing. Your mind is far more vast than your brain. Your brain is the physical space where your mind expresses itself into. But that toxic stuff, that is not your destiny. Yeah. It is a warning signal. Yes. It is a warning signal that something is wrong and something needs changing. Yeah. This is the beauty of how we were created in the image of God. When it comes to facing toxic thoughts though, rejection, anxiety, depression, I don't care what it is, do you think our natural response is like, I'm going to face this down? No, we're like, run! <laughs> run away! The fire! Right? We see the smoke and we see the fire. Yeah. And in seeing, instead of seeing something that is a warning signal and that we can put out, that we can change and dismantle, um, that fire ends up kind of like wreaking havoc, right? But we must overcome our fears and face those toxic thoughts of rejection, anxiety, insecurity, depression, hopelessness, guilt, shame, fear, abandonment, whatever it is, we must face them and embrace them for what they are, warning signals, not your destiny. Your neuroplastic brain was designed to change. Amen. That's some good hope right there. In fact, you were designed, this is the next part, besides just facing those things, you're designed to be able to step outside of yourself in a way and be able to observe, be self-aware. Psalm 139, 14. David is praising the Lord. I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are the works. My soul knows it very well. How well do you know your soul? How well do you know the toxic emotional triggers inside of you? You were designed to be able to stand outside of yourself and investigate these toxic thought, thought trees. So I want to give you an example of what this looks like with a story of my own life. I've been on this intentional renewing your mind journey with uh, an amazing neuroscientist. Her name is Dr. Caroline Leaf. Maybe you've heard of her before. And uh, she has this thing called the NeuroCycle. And it's a 21, day, uh, 21 days of identifying and investigating just one of those toxic trees. So I started off by thinking about the branches. What are the, to what are the triggers in my life? What was it that I was experiencing? And I identified two. Uh, that I wanted to go after. And the first was the trigger of depression. So yes, I'm human too. And I would experience these, that feeling of being down, right? And in fact, I would notice a pattern. It was a pattern on particular days even. So I'm like, okay, what's that about? And then the second was a pattern of avoiding safe people to open up about life to. So that would be uh, fear of vulnerability. So after I identified those tri triggers, every day I would explore why. Why was I feeling this way? What circumstances were triggering these feelings? Why were those circumstances triggering me? And by the way, I wrote down all my answers. This was like 15 or 30 minutes a day. Just for 21 days, you just keep going after it. Okay, let's take at it from this angle. It could be this. And you just, you just bleh onto paper. <laughs> you, know, you just brain dump. And what's amazing, after you've read what you've written, the, it's amazing how self-aware you start becoming <laughs> when, you, when you do that. It's a very powerful process. In the process of identifying and investigating, I took, down, I took the trip down those branches and discovered a trunk, which is very exciting. In fact, it happened to me in kind of a funny way. I was at youth group, and I was like preaching a message, and I knocked over this water bottle, like kind of near the end of my message, and I go, oh, I'm sorry. And I said, I'm sorry, and I looked up at Andrew Wenger, my friend, and he was in the room. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just said I'm sorry. And he's like, yeah, you used to say I'm sorry all the time. I was one of those profuse sorriers, right? You're like, stop saying I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so significant. You know, you just know. You're like, I don't know it, but like, that somehow matters. You know what I'm saying? And so... Yeah, that self-awareness was firing off on all cylinders. So right in the middle of that 21-day process, the Lord revealed this other trigger that I didn't realize. 
I started to ask, what is it that I'm saying when I say, I'm sorry? You know what I discovered? I was really saying, I'm an inconvenience. It sounds like a lie to me, if I've ever heard one. But right then and there, I just identified the trunk of that toxic tree. Now, here's the other thing, by the way, that I want to mention. As soon as you become aware of that toxic thought, that tree, just your awareness of it immediately starts to weaken its integrity. Do you know that? That's a scientific fact. Your awareness of it immediately starts to weaken its structure. Hallelujah. And so now the next question came. Now that that trunk is identified, what about its roots? What was its origin? Where did I start believing this thing about myself? It's amazing how the Holy Spirit is with you on this kind of journey. Because next thing I know, I'm back in a memory with my stepdad. Chores are left undone, and I can see him becoming very angry that that was the case. As a little child, I interpreted this behavior. I'm in the way. I got to perform. I got to perform perfectly, even if the expectations aren't clear. And suddenly, I conceptualized that whole scenario. Now, here's, let me just say this really quick, is my stepdad is a human being. <laughs> and just like every other parent in this room, he did the best he knew how, right? But as a child, it's, it's very normal for our children to conceptualize that it's my fault. Little did I know that for 20-something years, I was carrying that around <laughs> into my adulthood, but God is good. So now what? You've identified the toxic thought, gotten down to its origin. What do we do now? In the famous words of Pastor Ron, don't just erase, replace. Amen. And that leads me to step three of renewing your mind. Renewing your mind requires that you do something with what you've learned. This is a big one. Jesus said in Mark chapter four, verses 21 through 25, he said to them, is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed and not on a stand? For nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. So here's a promise from Jesus saying that any secret thing will come to light. You might not realize that these ungodly beliefs are hanging out in the soil of your soul, but your emotions will tell you very quickly. I gotta tell you, those triggers of depression, those triggers of feeling down, there was a reason for them. And Jesus is the light in us. Nothing that is hidden is hidden except for it to be made manifest. That is your promise from God. But there's more. He said to them, verse 24, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. For to the one who has, oh, and still more will be added to you. For to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Look at your neighbor and say, use it or lose it. Hallelujah. John 8, 32, Jesus said, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. The word for know there is a type of knowledge through experiencing, through obedience. It doesn't quite get learned until you do something with it. What are you doing with what you've heard? So the one thing that I didn't describe about this amazing 21-day process called a neurocycle is every day you have something called an active reach. Just one thing that you do in the opposite direction of this toxic thought. So for instance, let's say you discover you're a chronic people pleaser. That day, when you discover that, you go, I'm gonna practice saying no to someone today. <laughs> Just one simple thing, just one act of reach. It doesn't have to be this giant behemoth of a thing. You can't conquer it all in one day. Just one little progress. In the realm of the soul, here's a here's really important point. In your spirit, you are made perfect. You are made like Christ. It's beautiful. In the realm of your soul, we don't celebrate perfection. We celebrate progress. Amen. Amen. If you're stepping in that right direction, God is pleased with you. Hallelujah. This is just one simple thing that active reach to do in the opposite direction. So for instance, like I said, if you discover the chronic, if you discover uh, you believe the lie that no one cares about you for that day, and by the way, in that process of writing, you'll find yourself saying things like that, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's not true. But somehow deep down in that core value level, I was believing that. You know, there's a difference between having a high value and a core value. Core values, God is, God is after those to change them for real. 
And let's say you discover, uh, nobody cares about me. For that day, you just make a decision. I'm gonna declare at least twice today during my day. I'll write it down on my phone. I'll just pull it out. I'll declare something like, God deeply cares for me. and He's committed to placing me in relationships of caring people as well. Thank you, Lord. Just that simple. Nothing crazy. For me, the day I discovered that I was afraid of opening up, my active reach for that day, reach out to somebody. Call them up. Let's do something. Let's hang out. Step in the opposite direction. I also did an active reach in which instead of saying, I'm sorry for being late, something like that, I'd say, thank you for waiting. (laughs) Another thing linked to believing I was an inconvenience was being afraid of getting clarity of expectations. So for an active reach one day, I said, okay, here we go. What did you mean by that? Can you clarify for me? Can I just, I just want to get it clear. Active reach for that day. Something in the opposite direction. After 21 days of dismantling that toxic thought for the neurocycle, cycle, you do the active reach for another 42 days. So to dismantle an unhealthy to- thought, 21 days, 21 times two to build up the healthy one. And at first it's just a little sprout. Bonk. <laughs> but day after day, it grows. Which by the way, those 21 days... Segments are very, very important. If you do this for seven days, you're going to, after seven days of just, you, you'll be like, I've got this, right? But if you stop, then it dissipates into heat energy. Your brain's just like, forget. 14 days, same thing. 21 days, there's something about that number. Seven, it's, just very, it's very interesting. Okay, so for 42 days, I decided to do a declaration, and uh, I'll show you what that one is at the end. Um, I'll show you in just a moment. But before I go there, let's take a moment and exhale. (sighs) Feels good, right? So I just took you on a bit of my journey. I guess my question now for you is, are you willing to take the journey yourself? Um, I want you to bow your heads right now, and I'm going to ask you some questions. That seed of God's word is planted in your spirit and it's growing up into your soul. As you face, as you make a decision today to face those toxic thoughts, face those emotions that are so easy to run away from, you're actually going to discover the beauty of God's word. And what's amazing is that that seed of God's word, in that place of awareness, suddenly it will touch the realm of your experience and your emotions and you will taste and see that God is good. So that's my question for you. Do you want to taste and see that the Lord is good? Are you willing to face down the toxic thoughts that are blocking the seed of God's word already growing inside you? Are you willing to embark on the journey of cultivating the garden of your life? Are you willing to take a step to do something with what you've learned? If you'd say, Chris, I want to go on this journey of continually renewing my mind. If that's you, would you raise your hand today? Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here and you've not yet received Christ into your life. Maybe you're watching online so that you can be born again. You have not yet had that incorruptible seed of God's word get planted in your spirit. If you're here and you've never committed your life to Christ and you're ready to do that today, please raise your hand. Awesome. Can we pray this together? You just repeat this after me and just engage your heart as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the finished work of Jesus. Thank you for sending your son to die for my sins and raising him up to life again so that I could receive the gift of Jesus' righteousness. Father, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. Today I commit to follow Jesus as my Lord, Master, and Savior. And on this journey, I also commit to renew my mind in the truth of your word. Give me the courage to overcome my fear, to help me face down the toxic thoughts of my soul. Thank you for being with me as we dismantle these toxic mindsets 
and replace them with the truth that makes me free. Thank you, Father, that you are the master gardener. Help me to stay connected to Jesus during this process. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so you can look at the screen really quick. This is my active reach for the last 42 days of the neurocycle. I think it'd be good if we said it all together. Oh, it's a little small. Never mind, I'll read it to you. If you can read it, it's tiny. You're like, I'm sorry, I gotta put on my glasses. This is what it says. I renounce the lie that I am in the way and that I need to perform perfectly to be useful, worthy, and significant. I thank you, Lord, that you value my contribution because you created me. When my father sees me, his heart is filled with love, joy, and delight over me. Before I was ever born, he wrote all my days in a book. He was delighted to put me in Christ and put Christ in me. Now that I'm in Christ, he has prepared grace for me in every circumstance. The Holy Spirit helps me to discern that grace. His grace empowers me to become an expression of Jesus whom he's eternally pleased with. Everything I long for has already been completed by Jesus, and I get to discover those beautiful gifts my Father prepared for me. So if you're interested in learning more, taking a deeper dive into this whole topic of the neurocycle, make sure you join us in our January small group called Switch Your Brain On by Dr. Caroline Leaf. You'll get a chance to really learn some of these hands-on tools of developing a lifestyle of renewing your mind. And in today's handout, I also include a very simplified explanation of it on the last two pages um, so that you can start this process as soon as you want. All right. Ha, we'll take another exhale. Hallelujah. So today we also have uh, the privilege of taking communion as well. So um, this is something that we want to celebrate. Obviously, the wonderful finished work of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that opened the door for us to receive that grace in every area of our lives. So if you've committed your life to Jesus, you don't have to be a member of our church. You're invited to take communion with us. Thank you, John. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. So if you don't have one yet, you uh, can just raise your hand. The ushers will get you the communion elements. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. Take this in remembrance of me. Father, we set our hearts this morning to remember the sacrifice of your son, that through his broken body, we might receive healing and wholeness in our own bodies, not just physically, Lord, but in our soul. In our soul, Lord, you said that you came to give abundant life. Lord, we want to taste and see that you are good. We thank you that we get a literal, physical representation of this exact truth in our hands today. So let's take the bread together. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice so that we could experience your life in us. Let's take the bread. In the same way, Jesus took the cup said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary that we might receive forgiveness for our sins. Today before you, we release anyone who sinned against us. Lord, we thank you for the power of making a decision to not hold it against them anymore. Lord, that that it's literally an act where we are pulling that toxic root out of our soul. Lord, we thank you for helping us do that. We come in our hearts. Just take a moment before we take. Is there anybody that you need to release to the Lord? You can do it right now. Father, I forgive them. I release them to you. I forgive through Jesus, the forgiver. We just allow the amazing oil of the Spirit to flow in to that part of our soul to bring healing. Oh, we thank you for forgiving us. We thank you for the gift of your righteousness. 
Let's drink together. Amen and amen. Awesome. Well, if you prayed with us today or received Jesus for the first time, please let us know. You can fill out our online connect bar. Yeah, the bard. The bard of the online connect. Sorry. Online connect card. Uh, and you can do that by going to the More tab on the church app, Christian Life Church Maine, in your app store. You can also let us know of any other testimonies or prayer requests that you might have. Um, so please do that. Now as we transition to receive the tithes and offerings, we're going to show a quick video of the ways that you can give, and then we'll view a video about uh, this month's mission initiative, and I'll be right back here afterwards. As we transition to the next part of our service and prepare to receive tithes and offerings, we want you to be aware of a few things. If you're here in the sanctuary and need an offering envelope, raise your hand right now, and the ushers will bring one over to you. Here are the other ways that you can give to help fuel the mission here at Christian Life Church. You can give on the app by going to the More tab and then select Give. Or you can give on our website at citlchurches.org slash donation. You can also give by texting GIVECLC to 188-364-GIVE, that is 4483. You can also send a check by mail to the address on the screen. Thank you for making a difference with your generous gifts to the Lord. Hi, I'm Denise Trappi, and I'm so excited to share with you our November mission initiative entitled Angel Tree, which helps provide Christmas gifts for families in need at CLC, Lydia's House of Hope, and in our local community. This year, instead of directly getting a gift, we're donating $25 gift cards from either Target or Walmart, and our goal is to provide two gift cards per child on the list will then supply the families with the gift cards so they can personally buy gifts to give to their children. Year after year, this has become such a special project here at COC that brings great joy to those in our community. Now we have angel ornaments where you can choose a specific angel to purchase for, or we can choose one for you. You can either pick up the gift cards yourself and bring them back to COC with the angel tag, or we can, you can make a donation and we'll purchase the gift cards for you and assign a child who will receive your gift. This year we have at least 40 children that we're endeavoring to help, which means 80 gift cards that we're hoping to give. If you'd like to donate, you can go to the church app and click the event tab and locate Angel Tree. Now, once you open the event, you'll find the link to give. If you're here at CLC, then you can sign up either in the lobby, or if you just want to make a donation, you can give on the offering and mark other on that white envelope and write Angel Tree. We'll be receiving funds and cards throughout the month of November. All donations will be due by December 5th, so that we can be sure that the families have ample time to purchase gifts. And if you haven't done so already, check into Christian Life Church on Facebook or Instagram, and use the hashtag, hashtag Angel Tree. We so appreciate you partnering with us as we help to bring joy and blessing to the families in need. Awesome, and thanks again for everybody who has given towards that. No more ornaments, they're all gone. We just watched that for no reason. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it's amazing. I think over like, I don't know, it's like 90 something gift cards or something. $25 each. Guys, the generosity is like amazing. So thank you so much. So today as we uh, give, get a chance to renew our mind. <laughs> Here's the thought I want to leave with you as you get ready to give. When it comes to wealth and finances, don't confuse the source with the resource. Let's look at Matthew 6.24 to get a better idea of what I mean. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. 
For either he'll hate the one, love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is an interesting word. Most translations don't use mammon. They say money. I'd like to propose that those two things are actually not the same. In Jesus' days, the listeners understood mammon to actually be the Syrian god of riches. So Jesus was pointing out a demonic influence, spirit, that likes to sit on money. And he wanted to, and I think he's asking us the same question, are you under the spirit of mammon? And one good way to check by re, is by replacing the word God with the word money in well-known like provision passages. So for instance, Philippians 4.19 says, my God shall supply all your needs, right? If you're being influenced by mammon, Money shall supply all my needs. Instead of, and seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and everything you need will be added to you, Matthew 6.33. Mammon says, seek first to get money and then everything you need will be added to you. Which one describes where the attitude of your heart is resting, where you're putting your trust? Here's the thing about giving. It ensures that you never mix the two up. Your source and your resource. So what's your resource? It's your job. It's your source of income from that rental property or from your tax return, like whatever. And it's going to change a lot (laughs) throughout your whole life, in fact. But what about your source? Your source is your heavenly father who never changes. No one is going to take better care of you than your heavenly father. Amen. If he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor, how much more will he clothe you? If he watches over every sparrow, how much more does he love you? I don't give so that God will provide for me. He's my father. He's going to provide. That's who he is. I heard it put this way one time and it made me laugh and I hope it makes you laugh too. He's God the father, not the Godfather. He's not gonna send, he's not gonna send Guido to break your kneecaps because you didn't pay your tithe, Okay. Now, the Bible does say that he rebukes the devourer for our sake. Woohoo! I like my stuff being blessed by God. Amen. But that is not why I give. I give because this is really important to the heart of God. Don't confuse the source with the resource. Look at your neighbor and say, keep it straight. Give and you'll renew your mind in that truth and be blessed for it. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for an opportunity to give into your kingdom, Lord. We thank you that you are our source We see you as the one who takes care of all of our needs. No one can take better care of us than our Father in heaven. Lord, let that truth seek deep down into our hearts, I pray today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now I'd like to invite Christine Wenger to the platform for some closing announcements. Amen. Thank you, Chris, for such an awesome word. Great word this morning. Amen. I appreciate your faithfulness, Chris. Thank you so much. Well, before we sign off from live stream, I want to remind you that you can take advantage of the Right Now Media, which is the church's gift of how many? I say it every week. 20,000 online or on-demand videos. Uh, For Bible studies and that kind of thing, all you need to do is to text CLC to 49775 to get that free gift today. Uh, We also want to remind you of upcoming events, which you can check out on the church app under the events tab. So you can go to citlchurches.org or check out that app. Um, Or also, if you receive your weekly newsletter, you'll find it there. Um, A couple of announcements. Say December 5th. December 5th, it's a big day. Your donations for Angel Tree are due, and it's the Christmas party. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's lots of fun. But however, today is your last day to purchase your tickets. So you don't want to miss out on the best party of the year, which is right here at CLC from 4.30 to 7.30 this coming Sunday, December 5th. Um, it's going to be right after church. Oh, excuse me. After church service, we are going to take apart uh, the sanctuary and set up, set it up for, uh, the party. So, uh, if some of you want to hang out and help us with that, that would be great. Uh, we're going to have our food catered through mezzanine. And again, those tickets are available this Sunday is it. Uh, and if you're not here at church and you're online, you can 
purchase your ticket through citlchurches.org under the upcoming events. It's a great time, great fun, great fellowship. Amen? Um, on December 12th, more than enough. Amen. God is more than enough, especially on December 12th, apparently. When you think about major issues in the world, or maybe even your own life, it might seem that the answer just isn't available, and the problem is too big to even imagine. But God, amen, but God answered those issues by sending his son Jesus, amen. And however, he didn't come in glorious chariots of fire, like they pictured. He came as a baby wrapped in cloth and in a manger. Was this baby truly enough? Was this the savior of the world? Join CLC Choir, their Christmas choir, for their production more than enough to find out just how all-sufficient God's answer was in sending Jesus to the world. Amen. Um, it's happening on Sunday, December 12th at both the 9 and 11 services right here at Christian Life Church. So for more details on that, you can go to the events tab. <laughs> That's right. On the church app or the website. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us today whether you're here in the sanctuary or live stream uh, to our online audience. We just want to say thank you so much for joining us and being part. We hope to see you in person soon. Uh, keep us posted on any prayer requests that you may have. And we want you to know that you are in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our minds. And we hope that you will have a blessed week and hope to see you soon. Amen. God bless you. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into Church Online today. You can catch the playback of this entire broadcast later today on Facebook or YouTube. Or if you want to download the entire message, then on Tuesday you can get it on our church app found at Christian Life Church Maine in your app store. Our church app also holds so much more information, so take the time to look through the many tabs I especially want to encourage you to search out the event tab and learn about our upcoming events. We want you to know that you're important and you matter to us, and we want to stay connected to you. So if you have a prayer request or if you want someone to reach out, if you have a need for information or would just like to join one of our many Get Connected groups throughout the week, then send us an email at info at citlchurches.com and we'll be happy to get that information out to you. I want to remind you that you're never isolated or cut off from the love of God or from His power and protection. We've been hearing so many wonderful reports from people who've come back to church to a live service and we hope you'll consider joining us again soon. Please know we're continuing to take extra precautions to keep the building clean and to keep it safe. Now in closing, I just want to release God's blessing and protection to overshadow you and to keep you in this upcoming week. Until then, see you next week.